What is up, YTPC? Andrew here, aka Bluefin Piper, coming at you back home, finally, here in beautiful New Jersey. A little chilly today, but not too bad. Just enjoying a, a sunny St. Patrick's Day. I hope everyone out there in the YTPC is having a great weekend, having a good Sunday, and also enjoying uh, their St. Patrick's Day. Well, as I mentioned, uh, I'm just back, got home yesterday after a two week long work trip in Asia, and I'm very happy to be home and having a chance to catch up and relax. So far jet lag is not too bad, but I'm guessing usually that hits me a day or two later. So I'm guessing maybe uh, we'll see next few days may, uh, may be a bit challenging, <laughs> but I am uh, happy to be outside and getting a chance to chat with all of you again. I know I have a lot of videos to get caught up on, so apologize if you haven't seen me commenting or uh, been around. Uh, just as I mentioned, since I've been traveling, I really didn't get a chance to, uh, to do much. So, um, Well, in honor of St. Patrick's Day today, I am smoking my Peterson St. Patrick's Day 2017 edition pipe. And I think I will try to see if you guys, I think it's zooming in here so you can see uh, beautiful green billiard and the really nice uh, part of this pipe is the inlay here and the silver band uh, really has this nice uh, Irish uh, carving in it. And yeah, I guess it has the 2017 St. Patrick's Day wording there. So anyway, um, when I saw this uh, pipe with the inlay, it really, uh, really, uh, spoke to me, so I figured I'd, I had to pick it up, and uh, I'm glad I did. And in it, I am smoking none other. What else would be appropriate for today? But some St. Patrick's Day 2018. And sadly, as most of you probably know, I think uh, uh, Peterson, they stopped making, uh, since they were bought, they stopped making uh, all of their kind of holiday lines, and St. Patrick's Day is one of them. And uh, this uh, 2018, which I have jarred here, um, you can kind of see, uh, really, uh, really became one of my favorite. It is one of my favorite aromatics, uh, and uh, one of the first aromatics actually that I that I smoked. And uh, it is a Black Cavendish Burley Virginia mixture. Um, and the topping is mango, blackberry, and rum. And it just has this beautiful uh, fruitcake, figgy, blackberry tin note to it. And uh, the smoke itself really echoes it quite, uh, quite well. You know, a lot of the time you don't get that same flavor out of the smoke that you get from the tin note. And this is one that really, for me, I really do enjoy. I get that really that blackberry flavoring get a little bit of burn on the retro hail from the rum and overall it's just a really enjoyable aromatic smoke uh and you know sadly uh, i won't talk too much about it because sadly you can't get it anymore it's uh and it's discontinued and they're um unless they start it up again they're not making another one so um so if anybody out there in the ytpc has any of this st patrick's day 2018 and they'd like to trade or get rid of it i'd be happy to take it off your hands <laughs> just uh reach out to me in the comments and let me know well uh so all right so if you saw the title of this video uh you know that i wanted to talk to you guys about my trip and uh, not much to, to really comment on uh, except for Singapore and when it comes to pipe smoking. And let me tell you, uh, I have, I had an amazing experience. One of those holy grail moments of uh, tobacco B&M hunts. Uh, so it's one that I will not soon forget. And um, so I'll just tell you the story. So I landed, we flew from Shanghai to Singapore. Uh, on Saturday and I landed around three o'clock and I had checked out they have one tobacco one good tobacco shop in Singapore that I had done some searching and research on and they're open unfortunately till four so <laughs> we landed as soon as we got off the plane I called the tobacco shop and I get uh, uh, Charlie the owner and uh, he you know he answers and uh, says you know I said oh I'm, I said I, I'm from the states big pipe smoker I really want to come see your shop you know can you stay open? Uh, you know, I'm going to get to the hotel, drop my bags off and come right to the shop. So, you know, Charlie was nice enough. He said, no worries. I'm not in a hurry. 
take your time, come on over, uh, and we'll get a chance to chat. So, you know, I got to, uh, got to the hotel, dropped off my bags, immediately jumped in a taxi, got to a shop right around four o'clock, which was supposed to be his closing time. And, uh, you know, an interesting shop, not what you would expect uh, from a, as amazing of a shop as it is, this tiny little shop in a strip mall, um, so to speak, in Singapore, as they have strip malls. And uh, I'll put the link, by the way, the shop's called Tabac 101, and the owner is Charlie Brown, so easy to remember. Uh, and he's from the UK, who's uh, uh, now, uh, I guess, an expat in Singapore. Uh, he was a banker and retired and got into the tobacco uh, business and pipe business. So um, uh, kudos for Charlie. He's living the dream. And anyway, so I got to his shop and uh, as I get in there, you know, Charlie, uh, you know, I said hello, introduced myself and uh, Charlie was laughing. He said, you know, I knew you were serious when you called my shop and said, I'm just getting off the plane and I need to come see your shop. So I think at that point he was, you know, he knew that I was uh, a serious pipe smoker. But so Charlie was nice enough to uh, stay open for me. And I came in and he actually told me, you know what, I'm, I'm going to close a shop. And Singapore law says that while I'm open, it's no smoking. But if I close, it's a private, uh, private office residence and I'm allowed to smoke in here. So he closed up shop and we went in the back humidor and, and lit up some pipes and uh, had a great, great chat. Um, and uh, let me just say in general, if you're ever in Singapore, I can't recommend enough going to check out Charlie's shop. Um, he is a wealth of knowledge and, and he's only been doing it for, uh, I think he said since like 2014 or so, 15, uh, not a long time, but I mean, he's really done his, his um, homework and I mean, he's, he's already made connections with all of the major pipe uh, tobacco manufacturers and pipe dealers and he you know, knows a lot of them firsthand and has relationships, has some great stories and just, a, just really an overall really nice, great guy to talk to. And um, so, uh, so in general, his shop is amazing. He has beautiful pipes uh, and for a small shop as it is, he has an amazing collection of Costellos and Sir Jacobo's and Radice and just really beautiful Italian pipe collection there along with a number of other pipes including some Briarworks and um, um, other brands I'm sure that I, that I didn't see but uh, has some really really beautiful Costellos and I know he said he had gone to the show in Europe and made it you know after learning one or two times he you know beelined it to Costello and, and uh, the first day or first morning and bought a bunch of beautiful pipes well um, so uh, the real thing I wanted to chat with you guys about was, you know, as I got to uh, talking with Charlie, you know, we, he, he, we were talking about his tobaccos and he just smiled at me and said, hold on, let me, let me show you something. So Charlie, you know, takes me into the little back room area he has, which is a back room, at, you know, small, small little back room area and opens his door. And it was like, you know, maybe I'll cue the music here, but it was like light shining out and ah, <laughs> in his back room he has one of the most amazing tobacco collections that i've ever seen i mean it's a store so for sale of course but um i'll say collection he uh was wise enough uh to stock up on almost every single mcclellan tobacco that exists existed uh for the most part he's got them all um frog morton's he's got it you know virginia's he's got it uh, Tudor Castle, Beacon, Beacon Extra, uh, Dark Star, you know, still Virginia, uh, f you know, all, just on and on and on, um, Blackwoods, St. James Flake, um, uh, amazing collection of McClellan tobaccos. And he doesn't just have one or two tins, he's got a lot. And, you know, beyond that, he's got all the Germain's tobaccos. He's got all Samuel Gatwick tobaccos. He's got, um, uh, what else, what else am I thinking? Um, rat trays. He's got all the rat trays tobaccos. Uh, and you know, his collection is amazing. He's got three nuns, original three nuns tins by the three and five pack. And, um, so just to see all that tobacco in one place, it, it is what you hunt for when you go looking at B&Ms. Now, I just disclaimer my, you know, he didn't have any esoterica tobaccos and he said that's because Arango imports them to the U.S. and he's not able to get them there. But he's got all the Germains, Rich Dark Flake, Special Latakia Flake, you know, Century, uh, 
you know, all of the, uh, the Royal Jersey tobaccos. So um, just an incredible experience to see. Now, the catch, of course, is that it's Singapore and there is taxes and duties and what it boils down to is, you know, you spend, he spends, and he, I mean, he's selling it for a reasonable price, but it's reasonable. So he's making money in Singapore, um, which, you know, that's his business, right? And he's got to make money. So that's, uh, and I think for the McClellan tobaccos, he's basically selling them at eBay prices, um, which, you know, is smart for him, but he's got to add on a little of the duty costs for him in Singapore that, you know, for him to get the tobacco. So um, basically his, Normal tobacco prices are, you know, around a dollar uh, a gram. So, yeah, I mean, if you're buying, um, you know, 50 grams of tobacco, which is like a two ounce 50 gram tin, it's almost almost costing you $50. I think it's more in the 40-ish range when you do Singaporean to U.S. dollars, I'm saying. So it's, you know, unfortunately, unless you're going to really drop some mad cash, that stuff's really expensive. And I think... Uh, um, it, it, so it makes it a little cost prohibitive to go in and spend a ton of money there. Um, but that said, the really cool thing is all the aging he's got on a lot of his tobacco. So what I, my, my strategy, I went there and I wanted to spend some money. I mean, he was so nice to, to stay open for me, to, to have a pipe with me. I was going to spend some money there in his shop. Um, I always try to spend money in B&Ms when, when I can to give them money and keep them going. Um, so what I, my, my mission was to buy things that I, I just absolutely couldn't get or didn't have or had age on it that I really wanted and enjoyed. So that's that's what I did. And so I'll show you guys what I managed to pick up, uh, waiting long enough, right, for the, for the reveal. Um, so let me just go through what I got. I got two tins of Cabby's mixture and from my dating, uh, these are from 2016. So some really nice age on these already. Um, Got two tins of St. James Flake. These are from 2017, so some age on those. And two tins of Century, Germain Century, which I wasn't really sure which Germains I wanted to get. I, you know, I already am lucky enough to have Rich Dark Flake and Special Lot of Kia Flake, so uh, I didn't go with those. Um, but but ja, Charlie recommended the Century um, and said this was a really nice one and really worth trying, and I've never tried it before. I don't have any, have a hard time getting it. So I picked up two tins of that. Um, and then as far as the McClellans go, you know, I would have loved to have gone crazy, but it was just way too expensive. What I did manage to pick up was a tin of Dark Star uh, from 2016. I'll show you guys. All right. And also a tin of Blackwoods Flake, just because I don't, I, I do have a little bit of this, but it's just phenomenal tobacco. And again, from 2016. Um, so you can see right there, tins with age and, um, you know, who knows, I'm hoping to go back someday soon and, uh, and, uh, we'll see maybe next time I'll have to bring a, a separate, separate carry on bag just for <laughs> to buy tobacco. And I did also, I should say, I did also get, uh, some Marlin flake bulk from him. I think I got two ounces of that and it was, uh, aged as well with, I think three, uh, three or four years of age on that, nice and dark and beautiful. I've already tried it, tried a little bit, and it's really nice. Um, so I couldn't resist that with some age on it. Um, you know, in hindsight, I probably probably would have liked. I should have gotten some rich dark flake and special lot of Kia flake bulk that he had. But uh, you know, again, cost wise, it's pretty crazy. <clears throat> so the last thing I want to show you guys uh, was my last purchase, and um, I knew I wanted to get a pipe while I was there you know, commemorate the trip and also again, you know, show some love. And uh, I, I saw this pipe and uh, this is going to be, uh, you know, a shout out to Mel, the garbage man piper, because I think uh, I found one that you might like if you're still interested in getting into the Costellos. So you guys know I'm a huge, uh, big Costello fan, love the Italian pipes. Now I do have, I'm going to just come out and show you guys this pipe. Here we go. Ta-da. All right, so this is, as you can probably tell, this is a Costello Sea Rock Canadian, uh, and it's a, um, sorry, get this right. I believe you see the, the name there. Now this, I think this is a, a Quad X Canadian, um, but the thing, the reason I, I do have a Costello uh, Sea Rock Billiard in a Canadian, um, but the reason I picked this pipe up was because of the pencil shank 
on this pipe. I've never seen Costello's with pencil shanks like this. And the stem bit itself, I should say, um, is just nice and tiny, thin, comfortable. Um, and and uh, Mel, you know what I'm talking about. Those bigger, larger Canadians are thicker and smaller and chubby, um, you know, bits to them. Really hard to um, to really uh, clench. And this one just fits beautifully. Um, and again, I've 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 not seen any Costellos with this pencil uh, shanks like this. So I really couldn't resist. Uh, and he had a couple. Um, the other one was was I think the more reddish kind with a smooth rim. Uh, but a little smaller than this one. I think it was more of a billiard in. Um, so, so there you go, guys. I could not resist the Costello. Very reasonable prices, by the way, on his pipes. They're just normal prices because you don't pay extra t tobacco duty on them. So um, that was just a normal um, C-Rock U.S. prices. Very, very affordable. Very reasonable. So, so there you go. A um, little bit of little bit of story there, and uh, Charlie. Uh, was also nice enough to put us on a fantastic restaurant that he got us in at for dinner uh, while we were chatting. I was asking about food places in Singapore, and uh, he gave us an amazing recommendation. Not only gave us a recommendation, called up, got us a seats at the chef's table uh, for dinner that night, and uh, we had an amazing meal, a uh, really fun time at Mag's Wine Kitchen. So we enjoyed talking to Mag and uh, really was just an amazing experience overall and just again goes to show you how incredible the pipe community is and just the the bond we all share through the love of pipes and tobacco um, this person that I'd never met before in my life um, you know was nice enough to not only keep his shop open stay and talk with me share a pipe with me for a while um, and help you know me beyond that so um, so Charlie I'm sure you're not going to see this but if you do um, thank you so much, and I really look forward to getting back to your shop. Um, just a really amazing, amazing experience uh, that I will not forget for a long time. Um, so uh, with that said, um, I'm going to, you know, in case any of you guys are interested, I'm going to wrap this up for now. We're going quite long, um, but um, I'm at the end of this video. I'm going to throw in some pictures, possibly a video from Singapore, show you guys some of the sites mostly the Marina Bay Sands, which is an amazing, one of the most amazing buildings in the world from an architectural standpoint. And at the very top, they have one of the coolest bars you can ever experience just with the view, which is unbelievable. Uh, and you can see from there into uh, Malaysia and um, you know other parts of, uh, of Singapore. It's just a really incredible experience. So overall, great trip. And I'm really happy to be home. Glad to be back. Um, hoping to get caught up on videos. And I wish you guys all happy St. Patrick's Day. Till next time, tight lines. Happy smokes. Take care.